compared to the more sore appeals. If uh, the councilors will take their seats, we will get resume with item number 83 to consider a request from Edward Millett for a sewer extension. Michael. Yeah, this gentleman has submitted a letter to the town requesting an extension of the sewer on Angel Terrace. It would serve uh, just one home uh, that is yet to be built. Uh, on Angel Terrace, uh, I would suggest that you refer this to the Board of Sewer Appeals. So moved. Sorry. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Item number 84, to consider a report from the Board of Sewer Appeals regarding a sewer extension request from Theodore Wainwright and take any necessary action. Mike. We received a call at 4.30 this afternoon from Mr. Leslie Lowry, who is the attorney for Mr. Wainwright, asking that this item be tabled. So moved. There a second. second. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. I'm abstaining because of Mr. Wainwright and the commission. Do we have a consensus from the council that Councilor yeah, William that. Jordan may abstain? Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? Uh, six, four, one abstaining. Item number 85, to consider a progress report from the town manager on the Sawyer Road reconstruction project and take any necessary action. Michael. Thank you. I put this on the agenda because, because it is such a significant project and one is essentially wanted to give the council the answer questions or to provide any feedback to me if you've heard from, from any citizens. Uh, the, as things now stand, the final design is just about completed. Uh, there have been meetings held uh, with uh, some of the property owners involved. Uh, the appraisal process has begun. Uh, within the next month, uh, there, there's going to be an extensive amount of work spent, of time spent by myself, as well as by the engineers and the appraiser, at trying to finalize uh, many of the details of the project. Uh, thus far, uh, from the meetings, there have been some suggestions uh, from the abutters, some of which we have been able to address uh, in a very positive way. Uh, someone wanted a willow tree removed we've agreed that we'll, we'll remove that willow tree, uh, that the roots would be very close to the road. There was another party that, that is concerned about how long the driveway will be uh, when the project is done. We've agreed that we'll widen the driveway to a double width so two vehicles can get in. We're, we're working in that spirit of, of trying to work with people trying to resolve some of their problems. Uh, however, there, there have been some situations where the residents have recommended we shift the road. And what, what we found in, in one instance was if we shifted it, more trees would be lost. It would affect some people more adversely. And we, we really looked at it a long time and decided we just couldn't do that. And we haven't been communicating that back to the residents. But uh, it, it is rapidly approaching. Uh, the, in the next two months, probably more likely in July, uh, but perhaps in June, you will have before you uh, proposals for the acquisition of property, as well as uh, beginning the bid process uh, for the project. Michael, do you, uh, when do you foresee the completion of this, before the snow flies? My sense is, if there's not an absolute guarantee, and I, I mean absolute guarantee, underlined six times, that the road will be paved, at least with the base uh, level of pavement, uh, that you know, we'll get it done this fall. Uh, we, we might divide it in, into two sections uh, to ensure that, but no matter what, we, you know, if we can't make that guarantee, we might delay the whole project to spring because it, it would be uh, terrible to leave that road open over the winter. Okay. Michael, how are we looking on the original budget projections and, and present budget? Uh, how much savings have you been able to garner through your excellent uh, means? None yet. 
Uh, <laughs> I met with the engineers last week and asked them to do a revised cost estimate. Uh, there, there have been a few little savings here and there, uh, one of which is up at the ex portion of Sawyer Road extending towards South Portland, that little bit that branches off. We pulled that back a little bit closer to the intersection because we found it was a huge piece of ledge that we'd have to remove. Uh, so there should be some savings there. Uh, but but originally, overall, the, though, it's too Originally, it was, what was, the, what was it, 1.2 million, was it, or 1.1? It, it was in that, I don't remember exactly off the top of my head, but that's, it definitely is in that range. So we're not going over, and yet any savings couldn't be considered significant in terms of the underside. Now, it's too early to say at this point. Uh, you know, we, I've got to wait for the engineers to the revised cost estimate. Nothing has happened that persuades me that the cost has changed dramatically one way or the other. Uh, w one other thing we're discussing, we haven't come to a conclusion, is perhaps writing into the specifications that we would allow Fifth Street to be closed off uh, during the construction since there currently are no residents there, or well, they may be soon, and that would enable them to get that section done that much quicker and, and really uh, get through there. There'd, there'd be some interruption from that, but. Uh, we're still looking at, at that possibility. There might be some dollar savings as a result of the, the speed within which the contractor could get through that area. <coughs> uh, so that's, you know, if anyone hears from residents' concerns, I'd appreciate you relating them to me. And we, we hope to address all the concerns, but I, I know we won't be able to totally satisfy everyone. There is not any action necessary on your report. No, except to answer Bill's last question. <coughs> just to accept his oral report. I would just want to say is what you just said a minute ago as far as making sure that it's going to be done and paved by this fall. And if you don't feel you can get it done, all done, you'll do a section of it and leave the other section until next year, next spring. Did I understand that correctly? That's right. Okay, how are you going to get a guarantee out of anybody to do that due to weather conditions and whatever? I, I, I think what I, what I was intimating was that unless they give me that guarantee, uh, unless they're willing to do it, the, the project won't go forward. I, I think it's a good idea, and I would like to take a hard look at closing Pickett Street because there is a lot of traffic there, but I'll admit there's no homes there, but there's quite a lot of traffic goes through there now. But if you could get a good saving out of have it closing it off for a week or two or three, I think it, maybe it could be worked out. But if all possible, it should be opened on weekends anyway. <coughs> uh, Councilor Tory. Just a, a small technical point. If in the future, when you have the summary of recommendations, if you just tell us what the oral report might be in reference to, I, I had a momentary heart flutter thinking you might come in saying you wanted a four-lane highway, or, <laughs> but just just some further explanation would be helpful. Uh, oral okay. Thank yeah. you. I, I, I should have explained that there was nothing alarming going on. Right. But, you know, regarding what, and then we could know a little better. Thanks. Quite well taken. So I'll move we accept the report. Is there a second? All, all those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Item number 86, to consider a proposed green belt plan and take any necessary action. This, for our audience at home, is the green belt plan. Move to read. Extend the green belt. Acknowledge receipt of the plan and send it to the planning board. Second. Second. Any discussion? Uh, Councillor Jordan. Yeah, by skimming through uh, this, I I see at least a couple of maps that, to me, are very inaccurate, uh, especially around the Great Pound area. Map two, where it says large parcels under sing single ownership which uh, I seem to be pretty familiar with the Spray Corporation land, and I'm also familiar with other landowners along there. And 
that shaded area that's showing Sprague Corporation land, it, it just isn't showing a true picture. And a lot of people, the Sprague's have given a conservation easement there, pedestrian easement along through there, and a lot of people follow the trail thinking they're on that easement when they actually aren't. They're on other people's land, uh, and these other landowners aren't too happy about people trodden across there with and, and with the mini bikes and dirt bikes and all that. And I wish we could somehow get the maps uh, to look more accurate. It, it shows that the Sprigs have got a lot more land than they actually have. And the same thing sort of holds true with the next map beyond that with the acquired easements and land showing showing again that that pedestrian easement that the Sprague's gave, but it really isn't, looking at this map, the, it isn't really the land, the, the proper location of the land that was given, is what I'm trying to say, I guess. And it, 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 it makes it so misleading, and, and, and the general public thinks that there's a great easement across there when there really isn't. Do we have a motion? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, Councilor Amaral. I just uh, wondered if uh, Councilor Jordan has other maps that show more accurately, or if the spray corporation does, uh, that shows more accurately what those uh, easements actually cover. Because I don't think we should perpetuate uh, an incorrect map uh, into our new study. Report. We should we should try to have the maps as accurate as possible. We take that up with the planning board. Would you provide some information or at least discuss that with them? Certainly. When they discuss it. Um, Michael, would you consider this to be a draft? It doesn't say draft. Yeah, it it's not really a draft, but that leads to a point I wanted to make. Th this is the the preliminary copy. The copies that are here at the, on the podium are the only uh, seven copies in existence. Uh, they won't, they, they are being printed now, won't be available for about another four or five days. So if anyone wants a copy, uh, it's, they can come in and look at it, but there aren't any available uh, and there won't be for a few more days. So I encourage folks to come in uh, and uh, take a copy uh, towards the beginning of next week. Uh, the maps weren't intended as drafts, but you know, obviously. Uh, you know, when the final Greenbelt plan is adopted by the council, if, if in fact one is, uh, the map should be accurate and that plan should be correct. Councilor Tinsman. Uh, just as a technical point, and I only bring this up because it's worked contrary to, I think, the council's wishes in the past, should the motion reflect that we were merely acknowledging receipt of this and referring it to the planning board rather than to refer it for all they know, we've accepted it, we agree with it in principle, and that we're just referring it to them for updating or technical review. This happened in other cases, and I just, the clarification may be necessary. Could I comment on that? Because it's good. I was going to mention that on, when we discussed uh, whatever the item talked about, item number 91, to acknowledge receipt is the proper words. To use the word accept denotes approval, but we should no longer use the word accept the report of. So in this particular incident, the proper words would be to acknowledge receipt, and but we are, but that does not mean that we approve of the plan. We are simply acknowledging well, receipt and, and sending it under the planning board. Would you, would you offer an, an amendment to? I use those words when I made my motion. Okay. Fine. Are you ready for the vote? Any further? Wait, 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 wait. Any further, uh, Councilor Latore? If we are merely acknowledging receipt, why would we? I don't. I guess I just don't quite understand why we're sending it to the planning board for them to review and then get back right. to us to come up with the final draft. Okay. I could put those words in. To send well, to I wanted to. You already did that. Yeah. No, to send the planning board for those. Because that's not clear. Maybe in everyone's mind, but now it is in mine. Why are we sending? Bill. Is that that was. Make changes and/or approve, and to be put to return to the council. That's an important part of what we're doing. That's, that's true. 
that was my problem that I had with it. Okay. That we, uh, why we were sending it to the planning board if we was going to approve it now that they've cleared up the motion, I shall vote for it. Okay. Are we ready to move on to the vote? All those in favor? It's Anybody? unanimous. When do we get it back? When the planning board gets it back to us, Three. Bill. Be a while. That's what I should have done. <laughs> it's not, it's I should have said it's dead. Right. Item number 87, to consider approving the warrant for the June primary and the Portland Water District trustee election and take any necessary action. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Lester, are you voting? Yes, well, you don't have to give dates or anything. Have it it's approving the warrant. Don't you? Are you voting? Well, yes, I'm voting. What is it? Uh, yeah. Second week in June. Second Tuesday of June. Okay, item number 88 to consider a report from the Finance Committee on the fiscal year 1989 Riverside Cemetery budget and take any necessary action. Frank. Uh, in light of the memo that's put out by the town manager that's in our packet, I believe some discussion is going to have to come about regarding the feeling or the opinion of what is the next step of the budget process. He's, he has recommended a certain thing for items 88, 89, and 90. I have certain feelings about items 88, 89, and 90, and perhaps we can clarify them and move on with the budget process. Originally, the budget next step in the budget process was to be set for the final adoption on May 23rd. There has been an indication in his memo to have a meeting on the 23rd, but set the, the actual adoption of the budget till June the first meeting in June, which I'm not quite sure, in my own mind, I'm 100% convinced that that's necessary, given the w all the deliberations that we've gone through, the final result in terms of uh, Thursday night's meetings, where I felt we, after hours and hours of deliberation, consensus building, we came up with some decisions. And uh, so, unless I'm mistaken, <coughs> I, I just wanted to tie in the discussions of 88, 89, and 90. Certainly 88, Riverside Cemetery budget is ready to go. 90, the uh, sewer fund budget is ready to go. The question revolves around 88, I mean 89, which is the municipal and the school budget. And I think you're all familiar with the memo, which caused me angst as I read it. <laughs> but it's regarding 88, 89, and 90. I thought the 23rd was going to be the public hearing, and then we have the adoption in June. That's, that's what we have to discuss. Then. My feeling is if it's possible to stay on track, I'd like to. If we have said basically to the school department that we would like them to cut 50000 from their budget, if it couldn't be out of the exact the revenues side that we suggested, the 50000 in cash surplus, they're saying are now revenues. But still, I think the statement has been made to them, which they understand. We'd like you to cut 50000 from their budget. And it's my understanding that that's, they're going to be taking up where 50000 in cuts are going to be coming from at the Wednesday night meeting. So as far as I'm concerned, that bottom line is set. The only other bottom line that we need to adjust incrementally, as far as I'm concerned, is investment uh, interest, which has changed only as far as I'm concerned in one dimension. And that one dimension is the 100000 in modules is coming out of our surplus which will affect how much interest we make off of that particular. But I felt that if the manager could assure us that any change in revenues could be found by some offsetting cuts here or there, small cuts in little pockets, in order to have a net balance, that we could at this time still proceed with setting it for a public hearing on the 23rd, basically asking the manager just that if he did find there was some loss in revenues, to offset it uh, by some cuts that wouldn't hurt by taking whatever it happened to be from here and there. That's why I feel that's the track that I feel we can still pursue in order to still have it set for public hearing and adoption on the 23rd of May. Uh, Pam. I have some concerns uh, about asking the manager to find some figures here and there that we don't know what they are until the time, until some future date, and it would be inappropriate 
for us to act on this figure tonight without having an act. In all my years, we've never acted on the budget without having a figure in front of us. And I, and I don't feel that I could act on it positively, anticipating some future figure, which I don't know exactly what it is. <coughs> so I would have to vote <coughs> against acting on that item tonight and put that off until the 23rd when all the final figures are presented to us. Um, I, I think we have to have a public hearing, too. Yes. So when we say uh, approval, the first, the regular meeting in June, we're also talking about having a public hearing that would be correct. That night. The 23rd, we would set the final figures, and the June meeting would be the public hearing and, or, and the approval of right. the budget. A Councilor Tinsman? Yeah, I too don't feel that we should sit down tonight as a budget committee and try to discuss numbers and how they work and everything else. If Mike. And we advised or asked Mike to, to go back and crunch some numbers and see what the bottom line was. If he has some questions or concerns, I do think we may need to meet again. However, when we meet again, we'll be meeting as the finance committee and perhaps we need to have an agenda item in that meeting so that we meet as a council to set the public hearing for the next meeting, if at all possible. It's one more meeting, but I feel better if we have that opportunity to sit down as the finance committee. Frank, I agree with what you're saying. We could probably move quite quickly through that meeting, but we shouldn't do it tonight. Councilor Amaral. I agree with uh, Councilor Carson and Tinsman. However, I w I'm wondering if there might be another date that we could agree on besides Monday the 23rd. What about the 25th? It's a Wednesday. There is an affordable housing committee meeting. Oh, wow, well, we better not make it the 25th. Maybe we could change that. If the, if the 25th is good with everybody else, we could, have change, we could change the Affordable Housing Committee. Then. What's the matter the 23rd? It's only Jane personal Tampa. now. I'm going to be at a COG conference in Connecticut, and I'd really like to be here. Are you going to be there the 24th, mm -hmm. Tuesday? But you would be home Wednesday. How about Thursday, the 26th? That's me. Councilor Jordan has an IWS meeting. Yep. We all need to be here, whatever day you choose. Is the 25th fine with everybody? Okay, and that's, that's great. Then we'll change the meeting of the other committee. Can we do that? Sure. We've got plenty of time. Are you chairman? No. <laughs> Okay, so we'll plan on having a workshop first and then a special meeting of the council, of the council on Wednesday, May 23rd. Time, okay? Time, and everybody will time. be there. 7.30? Or would you rather have it at 4? 7.30. Okay. Then um, the we have action to take on items 88, 89, and 90. Madam Chairman, I move that item 88, the discussion and final decision be postponed, postponed until the meeting of the Finance Committee in the Council on the 28th at 7.30 p.m. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Item 89 to consider a report from the Finance Committee on the fiscal year 1989 municipal school budget and take any necessary action. <laughs> Councilor Tinsman. Well, I move that uh, item 89 be postponed until the May 25th meeting at whatever time item 88 is discussed. You mean tabled? All those in favor? Yeah, it's not tabled. Postponed. Postponed. All those in favor? Opposed, it's unanimous. Item 90, to consider a report from the Finance Committee on the Fiscal Year 1989 Sewer Fund Budget and take any necessary action. <laughs> Councilor Carson. I move that discussion of final decision on item number 90 be postponed to a meeting of the Finance Committee and the, and the Town Council on May 27th, 730. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. 
Uh, item number 91, to consider proposed amendments to the town council rules and take any necessary action. Uh, Michael? Just want to mention you do have uh, two rules before you tonight for a second reading. And then there is one before you that, that was on the, the dais as you came in uh, for a first reading that was prepared at the request of Councillor William Jordan. Uh, the first two, you, you did give first reading, I believe, at your, your last meeting. The second one, uh, the third one, actually relates to an issue of when citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda shall take place. I drafted up some language at the request of Councillor William Jordan. Trying to lump these two together, or you? No, uh, the first two are here for a first reading, for a second reading. The other one is here for a first reading. And action. Yeah, the, the ones that are here for second reading, yes, and action. All right. Uh, we have um, a section 16, new section 2. In all cases where the parliamentary proceedings are not determined by the foregoing rules and orders, Robert's Rules of Order, latest edition, shall be taken as authority to decide the course of proceedings. Uh, Councilor Latore. I move adoption. Second. Any discussion? Councilor Jordan. May we ask some of the people in the audience how they like this because they're the ones who are going to be here. <laughs> not within the council rules. <laughs> <laughs> any public reaction to Robert's rules of order? I'm ready. So if there ready. is no public comment, are, are we ready for the vote? All those in favor? Opposed? It's a vote. Unanimous. Um, section 17, amend as underlined. When a vote is passed, this is all underlined, it's new. It shall be in order for any member who voted in the majority or on either side of a tie vote or on the majority side of an affirmative vote when four affirmative votes are not passed to, and this is not new, to have a reconsideration thereof at the same or the next stated meeting, but not afterwards. And when a motion of reconsideration is decided, that vote shall not be reconsidered. This is in the event that, for example, we only have six people and uh, an item has been voted on previously and three of the present of the people present had voted for it and three had voted against. And uh, usually, uh, well, under Robert's rules, a reconsideration has to be done by the person on the prevailing side. So in, in the case of an even number of people evenly divided, anybody, either pro or con, <coughs> the item may uh, move for reconsideration. Am I interpreting that correctly? That's my Mr. understanding Manager? of the rule as proposed by the town council. I thought that was only the rule was written in the first place. Madam Chairman? Yes. I move adoption of section 17 as amended. Second? Is there a second? Second. second. Is there any discussion? I might ask the same question. No um, comment? Close the public hearing. Any comment? I think this is. Okay. Uh, uh, Councillor Carson. Well, as you know, I voted against this this item because I didn't believe that we should make that kind of change. Um, I think one of the things that is an improvement, we are certainly not asking to change Robert's rules, we are simply changing the, car the council rules, which is which is uh, somewhat better than me, although I probably will vote against this anyway. I have spoken, as Councillor <laughs> Latore said, when I really get my back up. <laughs> I get going, but I have spoken in Kansas City to the National Association of Parliamentarians, and I have spoken to the local state association of parliamentarians who believe that we're somewhat 
a little off to the left, maybe considering this. But I think there are several things to consider if we're going to revert, uh, as we did vote in section 16 to Robert's Rules of Order, that up until now, in most of the items that we have used Robert's Rules, it appears to me from our conversations with these people that we've done it wrong. <laughs> and that we should look toward improving this for the future. Uh, one of the things that we've not taken into consideration is that in the basic rules, like, uh, this organization, like almost all organizations, <coughs> uses Robert's Rules as sort of a, you know, not a complete form, but it's a very, some of the very basic items. But in Robert's Rules, there are 13 ranking motions. And we frequently use the motion to table indefinitely, which is, of course, as we know, is a killing motion. That is the most, it's the hardest of all the motions. But as you go down the line, it says the next one would be to move to postpone indefinitely, which is the same as a tabling motion, which virtually kills the item. And the tabling motion actually should be taken up again at this meeting, or it should be taken up at the next meeting. We can't just vote to table and never look at it again. That if we were to take it up at a future date, some item that we really should say, I move that the item be placed on the agenda three months from now, or two months from now, or six months from now, with some set time, that that would be the proper way to take up any other future item. And um, that we can consider, of course, changing the rules as we've done in the council rules, that we, we cannot, as when we left the meeting last week, we were going to consider changing Robert's rules, and that became very firm to me that that's a copyright thing, that we can't do that. So we're simply doing right by looking to change the council rules. And that we should, as I mentioned, use the word acknowledge receipt, which does not denote approval or disapproval, just acknowledge and receipt. And that we should, like I did not the last time, use the time and date. And, and that should also um, be used. However, when I, I think that we are a friendly board. We've always been a friendly board. And just like Councilor Amro said, that she is unable to be here on the 23rd, Therefore, we think it's important that all seven people be here. We're not gonna vote on this item on some date when she's not gonna be here. We've all agreed to, to put off the meeting at some time we can all be here. And that's the way I would prefer to see it go than to say that the either side of a tie vote can bring the item up. This doesn't happen in the United States government, doesn't happen in the state government, doesn't happen any place. It is, they revert to Robert's rules, which says that only a majority can, can bring the item up again and it's to prevent an item from being brought up over and over and over again. It is one of the main reasons that they do it that way. Uh, if, if, a, if a losing vote can bring it up, they can keep bringing it up, and keep bringing it up and keep bringing it up forever and ever. And that is the main reason that it is only a majority opinion that brings the item up. Uh, so it would be my recommendation that we consider ourselves to be a friendly board, if there are six people here, and it's deemed to be an important item for all, people, all the councils to be here, that we continue to do what we have always done, which is, I move that we bring this up at the next regular meeting when all councils will be present. Or I ask the indulgence of the board to bring this up at the next meeting as an agenda item when all councils will be present, instead of changing the basic rule. Penny, I just wanna just question you on what you have just said. Uh, reconsideration has to be done, at, as I understand it, at the in meeting, which? at the meeting at which the thing was defeated, or the very next one. That is what they said. Yeah. So, if on the second time around there's six people present, you, I don't think you can we push it off another time. We may have Uh, Councillor Tinsman. Just, just to comment on Penny's concern about this, uh, the ability of either side and tie vote to bring an issue back. We are a friendly council, but believe me, if we were an unfriendly council and the rules stayed the way they were, just the form of the motion can determine the vote, whether you be for or against killing the bill. So I think either way you do it, you either reword the motion to effectively kill it for reconsideration, or you allow that normal process to be reconsidered later. So I think it's a half a dozen, one a sixth of another when you talk about either side bringing up a vote. It all depends on the form in which that motion was made. Items can be brought up again in the future after the next meeting. It can be brought up under new items if the wording has changed. And you can, you know, there are opportunities to bring an item up 
six months from now, it's not to say the council won't defeat that, but an item can be brought up in a new business that we already discussed six months before, and if you lost on that, you can try and bring it up again if you'd like. Just have to change the wording of it. I mean, there is opportunity to bring things up again, unless you table them definitely. Councilor Tensman. Just to make the point a little clearer, mm -hmm. if we decide not to adopt the council rules, it could be in the form of a motion, or we make a motion to adopt the form. I mean, either way you word that can be interpreted for reconsideration later, according to these new rules. In other words, if I knew it was going to be a tie vote and I didn't want the rules to go in effect or be reconsidered, the form of the motion would be I do not, I make a motion that we do not accept the rules instead of the normal motion to accept them. So it's that form that I'm talking about, either in the negative or in the positive, that can be voted effectively given to the old rules. That's not allowed under the norms. That's my whole point, and I'm not sure I'm very clear on it now. I'm not, either. I'm not too <laughs> clear on it. Any other discussion? Council or Tor? I just would like to make a distinction in my own mind between prevailing view and majority view. If it's, if it's a majority view and it's four to three, I feel really clearly that someone shouldn't have the right to keep bringing it up and bringing it up. But in this case, it would pass because of the prevailing view, i.e. three to three, it lost, so it's, it's a dead issue. And even though the fourth councilor may have been in the affirmative, which would have swayed an important vote and they were just sick and just couldn't get to that meeting, if, I'm worried more about when it's an unfriendly council than when it's a friendly council. And I'd like to see that uh, even if the side lost the ability to bring that up, because I feel it's just a, it was a tie, it's only fair, the person couldn't get there for whatever extenuating reason, and that fourth person or that seventh council should have a right in that particular situation. So I just think it's basic fairness, and I'm trying to make that distinction between prevailing versus majority of why it passed. If it passed, if it lost on a tie, it's just very, I just don't think it's fair that that seventh councilor is totally jettisoned out of that process, even though they could be the prevailing council. That's my I, I just want, if I can respond to that, things lose on ties all the time. I mean, that's just the way the ball bounces, Frank. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with the way the ball bounces in that case, though. Counselor uh, Carson. In that scenario, the absent counselor, if they were to vote for the item, simply ask one of the three counselors bring it up of course they won't bring it up they won't bring it up it. right they won't bring it up so you're well, you're, you're jettisoned out of the prize i just don't think it's fair on the basic element of fairness i don't think it's fair i don't know the president of the united states does it council Amaro. <laughs> council yeah. Amaro. under penny's uh scenario you would have to know that it was going to be a tie vote so you would ask the council to delay action on that item until either later in the meeting when the council is going to show up or until the next meeting, I table it to the next meeting. However, you'd have to know beforehand that there was going to be a tie vote, and that's really not a good way for a council to operate, to poll people beforehand. <laughs> so in that case, if, if you wanted to be fair to that counselor, the only way to do it would be to uh, to go along with this rule, this rule as we're considering it tonight, even though I know under Robert's rules, it, it's not considered correct. It, it was interesting to note that when I was trying to elicit this information from these people who were so knowledgeable about parliamentary rules <laughs> that I had difficulty keeping up with them, they said, if you're going to lose, what you do is you vote in the affirmative. That's true. So that then you bring it up again for reconsideration. Yeah. For as long as you want. That's true. But at any rate, Thank I you. Thank you. I <laughs> I'm dry. I'm dry. I, I certainly am not going to believe it. It's too late, and I missed my movie. <laughs> and uh, I probably will vote against it because I think that I think Robert knew more about it than I did. Well, I'm going to vote right. against it too, Penny, because my um, uh, we have to think about the purpose of rules in the first place. Um, and, and we have to think about rules in conjunction with our form of government. Um, rules are to provide a framework in which action can be taken and decisions can be made. Um, on the one hand, they want to provide for openness and fairness and public participation. On the other hand, they want to discourage Penny's paralysis. Uh, which a democracy can certainly um, 
uh, fall into very easily. Um, as open as we want to be, we want to move on and take action. So um, I see no reason for uh, flying in the face of Robert's rules that are used not by the main legislature. They use Harris rules, I think. And I don't know what the Congress uses, but um, they, parliamentary or legislative bodies adhere to a set of rules, and I see no, no reason to change the rules that we have just adopted in the event that our rules don't uh, address a certain uh, situation. So I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm going to vote against this. Okay. Uh, well, Penny's analysis that uh, this would allow the minority to keep bringing the issue up really wouldn't hold true unless you had an absent member for a long period of time. It would only be till the next meeting. If all and then, done. right, but if you had somebody who were, who was ill and was out for a long time, that could happen because you could continuously have a tie vote. But realistically, that probably is not going to happen. It's only that the, it could be reconsidered at the next meeting when that person shows up. So I don't really think that we're, we're going to <coughs> cause the council uh, any uh, delaying tactics by voting for this. Unless there's another person that. Mm. Well, that's the process. Yeah. Councilor Jordan. Yes, uh, <coughs> I I'm in favor of what Penny has said, and I am as opposed to this change because I feel it could get used, even though you're a friendly council, and you could stay friendly forever. But sometimes you might be a little bit stubborn and wouldn't want to uh, change your thinking. And then you could go on and on with the situation. So therefore, I feel that if that happens, then you should be on the ball, as Council Latour just made a note, so he won't forget it, to vote in the affirmative. So at the next meeting, when all are present, we can clear it, clear it up. So I'm opposed to it. Are we ready for the vote, or is there any more discussion on this item? All those in favor of adopting um, Section 17 as amended. Somebody got a vote, Barth. Opposed? Okay, it passed four to three. I'm going to watch the television set. So if this rule gets you in trouble, I'm going to pedal right down You're going to see here. Thompson coming in on stretches now. I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have another rule to consider. Yeah, we do. Okay, we have another rule to consider. And uh, this is the one that uh, Councilor Jordan, Bill Jordan, has brought forward. Um, Section 29, paragraph 2, currently reads, Persons wishing to address the council on an item not appearing on the agenda shall do so only after disposition of all items appearing on the agenda. The recommended new language is persons wishing to address the council on an item not appearing on the, on the agenda may do so after the roll call by the town clerk. <coughs> Councilor Carson. I'm certainly in favor of trying this to give the public the opportunity is there some way we could um, do this so that if, if it doesn't work and we find out that you're delayed an hour and a half before you were starting your agenda that we can make some adjustment? I mean, I think that's fine for the public as long as we can address changing it if it doesn't work. Do we, we have a temporary rule? We could try it on a time basis or something, year or whatever. Councilor Lester Jordan. Well, I guess is where I disagree with my colleague Jordan on the other side. Uh, I think if anyone wants to bring up something, maybe the first of the meeting or something, they can always put it on the agenda <coughs> for us to listen to. Because <coughs> if you allow the public to speak before we start the meeting, we may not start the meeting until 10.30. Oh, come You'll on. never get any business then. So I, I just think the public has a chance to address the council on the regular agenda. So I, I guess I'm in, not in favor of this. 
Council Ramos. Uh, <coughs> Council Lester Jordan's uh, comments I would agree with because I think an agenda is is very important for the con for us to be able to conduct business in an orderly fashion. Uh, and that certainly we allow public comment on every item on the agenda, and anybody can put an item on the agenda if they do so by Wednesday of the week prior to the meeting. However, if the council really feels strongly that they would like to permit citizens to uh, bring items before the council that came up over the weekend before the meeting, then I think if we do it, we should definitely have a time limit uh, at the beginning of the meeting, maybe try 15 minutes. Uh, I think that would be plenty of time to begin with if we found more time were necessary. Fine, but if you go much beyond that and we have an 11 o'clock limit uh, for our council meetings now, I think it's really going to make it much more difficult to uh, conduct the business that we have to conduct in an hourly fashion. And we could still allow for public comment at the end. We could maybe put it at both both ends of the agenda, but do it for a limited amount of time. If, you if want we didn't to have it. too many reconsiderations, we would get through fairly early, and it wouldn't be uh, <laughs> such a burden for the public to bear to express themselves at the end of the. But they can express themselves on any item that's on the agenda. That's true. Rather than just bringing up something that nobody has had any warning on, it makes it very difficult to take any action on items if you've had. Uh, if nobody knows what's going to be brought up. I mean, they would all be referred to some later action. Councilor Tinsley. I would just like to say that I agree with uh, Councilor Jordan. Which one? And uh, Councilor Amaral. <laughs> to your left or to your right? And I do think that there should be a time limit. And I think 15 minutes may be appropriate. I think the, the good part about adopting something like this is we may hear from citizens who just wouldn't come up here to sit until 11. If we get one little bit of information that makes our job better in responding to their needs by doing this, let's try it. And if they don't like it, if the new council doesn't like it, they can always go through the readings and amend their new council rules as we tried to do this last year. But I think perhaps 15 minutes may be adequate. So if not, suggest it up. I think we should try it. Councilor Jordan, I'm just going down the line here. Yes, uh, the reason I brought this up, <clears throat> and I thought about it in the past, and I talked to council on other communities, and I think it's two that I know I'm, I know of one positively, that they changed from the end of the agenda to the this part, and uh, they felt it worked very well. That people didn't like to come up and and uh, wait until 10, 11 o'clock before they could have spoken on an item that uh, that wasn't on the agenda that uh, kind of bothered them a little bit. So they put a time limit on to, to start with, and they felt the time limit <clears throat> went over very well, and I think it was 15 minutes that you had open for that, if anybody wanted to speak, because there are only a minute or so for them to, to speak on an item, and you don't have to take any action on it. They may throw out some ideas for you, and. There's a lot of people, I didn't say a lot of people, there's a few people who like to come up and have a few words, but they don't want to wait until 11 o'clock. And I disagree with Lester that we, we get the meeting going before 10.30. I don't think we're going to leave it open until 10.30 for the public to speak of items not on the agenda. I think that's a little ridiculous. It was a little throwing a little bit off base. If you take 15 minutes, and I would just like to add to it, I feel it should be done after you accept the minutes of the meeting and your correspondence can sit her after the roll call. This is just my point. Then you, just before you get into the agenda. Council Torrey? If we agree, agree to the 15 minute time limit, will there still be time at the end of the meeting that it could be brought up as well? Okay, because I feel 15 minutes is too short, but I'm willing to vote for an amendment if it's proposed based on the fact that if they wanted to, and it was really, there was a, a controversial <coughs> issue or, or whatever that was engendering a lot of discussion, they could have time af afterwards to do it. You're going to make an amendment to this? I would make an amendment, saying that uh, that it shall be limited to 15 minutes. Council may extend that if they wish. Right. That's true. Yeah, any any rules can be okay. extended. 
in, in that amendment, uh, how do you feel about having it after the accepting the, the minutes of the meeting? After accepting the minutes. Yeah. And also add that uh, items may also be discussed at the end of the agenda. Right. They'll still be That's already in there. Discussion. Well, if that'll be changed, yeah. though. We're going we're gonna to change that. Are you ready for the vote? Did you have anything to say on this, Penny? No, or have you uh, talked to yourself? <laughs> I, I'm, I think it should have a time limit. I think that the council should have the road to the right to extend or suspend the rules at that point by once the 15 minutes is up. And I think you should state that just as she said that you can do it, continue the discussion at the end of the meeting if you want. No problem. Ready for the vote? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? What are we the amendment, uh, the amendment the amended. 15 minutes. Oh, 15 minutes. First time. reading. Is so we don't have reading? to vote. Yeah, to give a first reading. We're voting to give okay. a first reading. Can we have the, okay, maybe second. the reading from the, maybe we can have a reading from the uh, clerk or something? So that we know what we're thinking about. about. the amendment. This is going to be a first reading. We ought to have yes. a reading. This is to give first reading to recommend a new language in section 29 of the town council rules. Persons wishing to address the town council on an item not appearing on the agenda may do so after acceptance of the minutes with, with a time limit of 15 minutes to allow the council to extend or suspend rules as needed. And continue at the end of the agenda. And to continue yeah. items. Um, then another opportunity at the end of the agenda. Yeah. Just one point of clarification. The next rule in the council rules provides that no speaker may speak for more than five minutes. Uh, as this rule is, is finally in written form, I assume that you, when you're speaking of 15 minutes, you're, you're speaking of the cumulative mm -hmm. of, of every speaker, but you're still no one speaker to exceed five minutes. You feel we need that in there? Well, we it's, already have that. It's already in Yeah, it's, it's in the next section, but the way that was worded, it sounded like anyone could speak for 15 minutes. So how about for can a 15-minute period? So, that they'll so you can have three people for five minutes, and then it has to be at the end of the meeting. Or 15 for one minute. Oh, <laughs> uh, 15 that is, people. That is like me, then one minute for one minute. <laughs> We'll clean up the language for you. Okay. This has certainly been the year of the rules. Yeah. 15 people for one minute. <laughs> <laughs> or 30 people for 30 seconds. <laughs> for a brief okay, are we ready for the vote? All those in favor? <laughs> Opposed, it's unanimous, no. I believe. Uh, Penny, um, we don't have to vote on that anyway. The first item number. Very oh, kind of body. 92, to consider clarifying the sewer availability charge and take any necessary action. I move to the ordinance committee. No? Does it go to the ordinance committee? Not an ordinance. Oh, an amendment. All right. Michael. About 45 days ago, I was getting ready to send a letter out to everyone who was pending sewer hookup to tell them where they all stood and what fees they might have to pay, et cetera. Well, I got out at that point the copy of the, the council vote on setting up sewer fees, and I couldn't even understand it uh, after having been involved. It was typical legalese, the most complicated thing I ever, I ever wrote. I called uh, the town attorney about it, and he said, but you're supposed to be interpreting it this way. And I said, well, that's not the way it reads to me. So what I asked him to do was to write the thing up again in such a way that spelled out very, very clearly when the sewer avail availability charge would be paid and when it would not be paid. This attempts to do that. I uh, would like to mention that Councillor uh, Latore called me today about Section 1, uh, lots without structures there on requiring disposal of sewage. Uh, he was inquiring about the current status of that. If you remember, we, we were originally going to charge the availability charge for vacant lots. Uh, we tried to identify those lots a while ago that, that the charge would be assessed against. We found it was extremely difficult to do. And what I said, I went back to you at some point, this was about six <coughs> months ago, 
and suggest that we hold that part of the sewer availability charge in abeyance uh, until we had an intern study uh, the whole issue. The, we do have an intern coming on uh, board on May 31st, and this would be one of the tasks of that intern is to study that issue. Uh, so, you know, I, Council Latore wanted to make clear, I know, and, you know, I think for purposes of the record, that, uh, you know, Section 1 may in fact only be temporary, that we still may be uh, recommending at some point that vacant lots be assessed as sewer availability charge. But for now, this is, this is the policy, and for purposes of clarity uh, and understanding by the public and by the staff, uh, I would encourage you to adopt uh, this amendment to the sewer availability charge. It doesn't change any policy that everyone felt was in effect. It just <coughs> puts in a little better language. Uh, Council Latour. Madam Chairman, I still cannot vote for number one because I don't believe that it's, if it was put in abeyance, then certainly we have so many thousands of items that come before us. I don't remember particularly it being put in abeyance, so certainly I don't, I don't believe that should be the policy that it should be. Lots, I always be believe that they were going to pay the sewer availability charge, and, and they were, as a matter of fact, based on the whole filling growth idea that certain vacant lots would eventually possibly have a house on them. This is how we decided on what the capacity of the sewer would be. It's been an integral part throughout, and as far as I'm concerned, throughout my voting to be consistent, I always felt that lots that were buildable were going to get charged, the sewer availability. I never, I've never wavered off of that. I don't think we as a council have wavered off of that. Um, I certainly don't remember when we said we, we're striking that as a, as a policy. So I, I have some real trouble with number one, codifying it, even if it's just for a temporary period of time. Because it's, to me, it was an integral at the heart of, part of the sewer availability charge. If you had a house and you didn't hook up, you were charged. But if you had a lot and you didn't hook up, you were charged because they were saving you space, very important capacity space, plus the value of your lot went up, and now you have sewer going by. So these were part of the whole rationale for building capacity and deciding on sewer availability charges were based on lots and houses in terms of when Michael came up with his original numbers. So to, to codify this and make it permanent, even if we struck it again six months, I wouldn't be, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with that. Two, three, and four I have no problems with because they're saying in perpetuity that they're not going to, uh, to develop, and if they do develop later, then we can hit them for all the back money. But number one is, is far too uh, major of a change for me to vote for. Thank Council. you, Madam Chairman. <laughs> Councilor Tinsman. I knew this was going to happen sometime before I got off the council. I knew it was inevitable. I agree with Frank. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're Boy, we're just getting it under the wire, Don. Just me. I hope Steve Campbell holds the presses. <laughs> Must be a little eerie. But I have to agree. And it's necessary in order to determine the capacity of the sewer system and ensure that these lot owners are allocated uh, the ability to hook up to the sewer. And also, it's a growth mechanism, even though I don't agree with the process of that. It is an effect, and it's very important to be part of the process until it's changed. And it's in their best interest to be on that list. And if they're not identified and they don't get billed, then I think they're at their own peril when it comes to capacity. And uh, that's all I have to say. I'm willing to bet a week's vacation that the council <laughs> took that action. <laughs> council Amaro. Yeah. We did take that action. We, we are not charging people uh, now, I, are we, uh, who are vacant lots? Because we, we, you're right, Frank, that initially this was the decision. Uh, but then uh, the manager came to us uh, with all, all kinds of reasons why we shouldn't put this into effect at the time until we found out how many vacant lots there were uh, and that we were going to do this study. So. I, I think that one should not be worded the way it is. However, it should say something to the effect that uh, uh, that we are in the process of studying this item and presently are not charging. Or, or some, I mean, it, sh it looks like it's final, like we've already made a decision to exclude those lots. And I don't think it should be worded that way. But we're not presently charging them. And we did vote. Uh, 
not to f until until this study was done. So I think somehow the language should reflect that, but it should not say that we've made the decision not to ever charge mm -hmm. them, because I don't think we've made that decision yet. And so, uh, I, I don't know what language. The money's, the would money's do from that. the charge goes into the sewer fund, which would hold down the sewer rate for present users. Is that correct? Correct. Then and perhaps I don't know. Perhaps I was absent. It's so rare that I would have been absent from these meetings. But if if I had known that, I would have asked that the study come in a lot quicker than it's coming because we're losing income on this. And the whole idea we've all heard the term time and time again: fill in growth, fill in growth. These are the lots that not, don't have homes that are going to have them built on. It's an integral key part of the whole process. And we've taken our income away from that. I don't. So I'm I'm really pleading that perhaps I wasn't here that night, or or I certainly. If it was pleading no low contende or something, it, it shouldn't have been that it's taken us this long, and I certainly don't want to see it take that much longer. So we make some decision on that. It was my understanding that um, the uh, that availability charge, as it is now called, was an integral part of financing the sewer, and that it's rather a cavalier idea to toss it out without knowing what the impact is going to be on the finances. Mm -hmm. Michael. Item number 212, you know, December 1987. It was moved by Lester Jordan, seconded by William Jordan, that receives a report from the town manager. Per town manager recommendation, sewer availability charge for vacant lots to be held in abeyance and to refer this issue to the Board of Sewer Appeals for further study. It was five yes, one no. Douglas Tinsman was no. Do we want to hear who was absent? I know who was absent. I was at my child's birth. That's Frank P. LaCour. <laughs> was absent. I was absent. I was absent. I, I know I would have swayed you the other way. <laughs> that was a worthy event. Chris Beast was there. Right. It was a worthy event, but I would but still ask that it be struck. Striking this from the I, I would ask to be struck. Struck it? Was that the was that the Wait a minute. Is this the study the, the uh, intern coming on to do this study? Is that correct? And then make a report to the Board of Sewer Appeals. And when do you expect that to be the end of the summer? How long is the intern gonna be here? She begins work May thirty first. This would be something I would have her do early on. And well, that the citizens at large must report to you by June first what their intentions are about the sewer. I mean, I got that letter, right? Yeah, but that doesn't apply to vacant lots. That applies to everything else. That letter. When uh, when is the first payment on the avail availability charge? Yeah, I'll do for the quarter beginning uh, March one of uh, eighty eight through the quarter ending May thirty first of eighty eight. The bills will be sent out in June. This June. Yes, next month. So, it, it's what so you're we We're really gonna, are over. We're going to make a barrel on this. I, I tend well, to want to take this out too. But. It's only going to be uh, one quarter of uh, fees that we're really talking about. And part of the problem is I, I begin to recall it was that there are a lot, there are several lots that were not easily identifiable. Uh, In the northern end, in particular. Yeah. You're going to have a lot of losses that come in. That they, the people really figure that they have one big lot, but yeah, for some but reason on the really town, good. assessing maps or something, it shows two lots. And uh, they're going to, they did the last time, they <coughs> had the northern system, they came in and cried to the town, and finally the town decided not to charge for those vacant lots because so many people came pouring in the door to protest. Is this technically a clarification of an ordinance? What is, what is this exactly that we're passing? Back last year, you, you passed an entire sewer rate structure, part of which was one paragraph, essentially, that said who paid the availability charge. Things were referenced by section. This merely spells it out. It was, so it was a council order. It's not an, or, it's not an ordinance, then? It no, was it was a sewer rate. Order. The sewer rate was not part of an ordinance? No. It's a council order? Council order. I didn't mean to pick you up. Councilor Tinsman. Regarding to Lester's concern about the vacant lot owners paying a charge.
charge and, and bring in suit against the town. They don't have to pay that charge if they don't wish to. That's only to guarantee the availability at some future date to hook up. There's another provision within that same list of rules that says if you decide not to pay the quarterly dues or the quarterly fee, then you're at peril if at some later date you decide to go on the sewer and there's no capacity. And if there is capacity, then you pay your back fees that have been held in abeyance. So there is a mechanism to get around this, and it's not something forced down anybody's throat. It's just that you may not have availability of capacity when you decide to hook up if you don't become part of the system. No. And that's all. And it's important, rate-wise. Yeah, to give you an example, there's, there's lots on uh, Eastfield Road that were, are in a resource protection district. There is nothing, at this point, he would have to pay the readiness to serve fee for, for a vacant lot, even though those those lots could not eventually be connected upon. And that was the type issue we looked at that, you know, it mentions here, that came up that, you know, obviously that's not intended. It was just, we started looking at it and, you know, it's, to review, do you want me to just read in one paragraph to give you an example of what the problem was? Lots subject to the fee include any lot with 20 feet of frontage on the public sewer line, just 20 feet, and upon which a structure could be located in conformance with the area width, frontage, setback, and use requirements of the zoning ordinance. To review all these requirements, area width, frontage, setback, use, along with complicating factors with grandfathering, wetlands, and resource protection district, is just about impossible without having specific building construction proposals. Uh, there's, a, there's another paragraph. Uh, the sewer rate also provides that if a lot is out for more than one sewer connection, then the availability charge should be applicable for each such connection. This, is, this raises the problem that while we may have a lot frontage requirement met, we have no idea if the setback provisor could be met. An additional problem is that the fee may encourage growth. For example, there is a single farmhouse on Mitchell Road near the South Portland line. By the current policy, the property owner would be subject to an annual availability charge of $1,250. This could be an incentive to move toward development on this lot and, and others. And then I went on to suggest that the summer intern look at some of these issues and come forward with conclusions for us. I think I might be amenable to a change where we said that pending a report <coughs> uh, that will be given and then a certain date by which that report will be given is the only is the only way that I can see mm -hmm. leaving that in. I understand that, the, that this is, you all put it in advance because the report was due, and now I'm just saying it's time to bring that report forward so that we can make a decision, and if we need to collect some income from the town, let's start collecting it. Or if we don't want to, let's not, but let's bring it to a head and bring it to a vote. So I will, rather than my lobbying for striking <coughs> completely, maybe we could amend it to read. Uh, pending, pending a report to be uh, prepared by the town manager and given to the council by June 13th or something. Well, I think what you want, Frank, is, is pending a recommendation of the Board of Sewer Appeals because it was, in fact, referred to them uh, to work with the intern. By, by Can we have by a, a, a by reasonable date? By so, September. 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 Very reasonable. <coughs> Yeah. I make that a motion. Is second. there a second? All those in favor? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. No. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. I missed you. <laughs> well, I'm glad the record shows I missed you. <laughs> Six to one. <laughs> and you were consistent with your last vote, which yeah. is impressive. Very good. <laughs> We have now come to that uh, portion of our agenda where we invite citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Look at all the citizens. We're running through the running. Well, there appears to be no citizen discussion. Is there any discussion of council members? Councilor Tinsman. There are just two things. I'll be very brief. I think. On the, mo on the motion that we had, or the discussion that we had with the Rachel Parsons people, and we really wanted to belabor the uh, agenda item, but I would hope that the manager doesn't go out and get an appraisal of the marsh area and so we know how the council's going to vote. I think that could be a two or three thousand, perhaps even more, dollar project. I mean, that's a good the other note, and it was on a tabling item, so I couldn't bring it up, was the uh, Board of Sewer Appeals. 
on that issue with the uh, uh, Wainwright development. I think I'd just like to make a comment that I think the board of sewer appeals appeared to be having a lively discussion at their first meeting. I, mean, I was really pleased to see how that group is working. And it was a five to one vote, which means that they uh, seem to be in harmony with the So I, I was pleased to see that in the minutes. So I just want to bring to that. Uh, on, on the, Madam Chairman, on the uh, appraisal, could you make a few calls just to see what it would cost? I'll also ask you what the Fish and Wildlife Fish will pay for it on condition. Okay. I'd rather not. Actually, I'd rather pay for it ourselves. It's truly an independent. Uh, Bill. Uh, just one comment to the manager. I see that down the treatment plant they dug up next to the road there again, and I was just interested in what the problem was. I'm trying to remember. It, it, my, I think it was some problem with insulation and coldness down in the hold. I, could, I, could, I have to check on it. That's. And I was told at one point, I just don't remember the details. On also, they're, they're seeding the rest of the area down where they spread out that spoil? They have, that, the contract still has not been closed out. It's one of the remaining contracts. So we still have some money of theirs to finish The water district does. The water district. Yeah, okay. That's the district contract. And number two, did you say the, the spoiling bridge will be done in three weeks or something like that? That's, I was told the bridge, there should be cars driving on it in two or three weeks. And the whole project ought to be done in five weeks, including removal of the old bridge and a little landscaping, that sort of thing. That'll be great. Now, what is the story on, on uh, the trees being cut down on Shore Road? Are, are we beginning the bicycle path? No, that's the uh, one of you, either New England Tell or CMP, oh. is, is trimming part of their regular program runways. There, there was a proposal in your packet, too, $2,000. For removal of that ledge that's come up at a couple different council meetings. I didn't get any reaction to it. Well, there was a bid price. In yeah, but the, the council hasn't authorized that project. I uh, was wondering if anyone had any feelings on whether or not we should be proceeding on removing that ledge near the dump entrance. Do you, what you, why you didn't have an item on the agenda? You feel it's too much? Or no, it right just it came, uh, I didn't get it until after I put the council agenda to bed. We've got to be on the next agenda then. I'll do that. Well, if there's no further business to come before the council, then uh, it, do we have a, a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Good just, night. Just in time. We had an agenda. We can make a motion. I'll vote the negative side. That's right. right. Most <laughs> everyone coming no, to the orientation session on Thursday night? Orientation session Thursday night for the board.